Today we're going to learn how pilots land on a carrier. We got some info on the takeoff process last time around. This time around, we're going to get into info on the landing of a first person view that was really cool last time we checked out one of the really videos. Cool. I remember like it taking off and I was like, damn, that thing's going fast. Yeah, definitely sticks out in our mind and uh, sticks out in my mind as well. And I think that what sticks out to me in this process of learning about military content is that there are so many skills out there required for these tasks. I mean, you know, he's going to go through a checklist, I imagine, like he did on the last mm -hmm. one. And it just... I was just mind blowing it. There's so many things to factor into when you're, you know, doing something that seems so minuscule. I'm just going to take off the carrier. Yeah. No, 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 things no. Things like you and I would <laughs> never think of. Exactly. Yeah. That's and I love point. how much you guys know in the comments. I remember reading, yep. actually reading the comments for that one. And I remember being like, damn, you guys are like very knowledgeable. About yeah. This. That's what we love. Reading yeah. Is learning from you guys. Coming in and being like, oh yeah. When he referred to this, he was referring to that. Yeah. And that means this. Because I remember we were talking about like, why do they take off like straight? Like why? Like the swoop, right? And like, we're talking about the take off with the swoop versus yeah. like going straight. And like, you guys were talking all about that in the comments yeah. and explaining that catapult and everything mm -hmm. else so anyways let's get into this one love live shows or game day train smart from anywhere with guided coaching that's built for everyone but with an added focus on users 50 plus take advantage of our limited time offer we got one month free and a seven day money back guarantee on the stairway to health welcome aboard we just broke overhead the United States ship Theodore Roosevelt. We're gonna keep this left hand turn in until we're about a mile and a half of beam. At which point we're gonna knock on our landing checks and land. As we get in close, I'm gonna break it down real slowly as to what exactly see. I'm looking at prior to landing and how that scan changes in close. Pay attention. Things change just as we cross the ramp. Okay, there's wings level. We are one, two, three down lock, flaps are full, hook is down, anti-skid switch is off, our harness is locked, and our dispenser switch is off. There's the beam. And now it's time to turn. There's the what? My left hand goes up, not a signature move, no big deal. Targeting 27 to 30 degrees angle bank, and I've got auto throttles engaged in a PLM landing. Now I'm putting my velocity vector a half a degree to a degree below the horizon, targeting 450 feet AGL at the 90. Now I'm just keeping that turn in, trying to play it out so I don't either undershoot and have an angling approach or overshoot and have to wrap it up at the start. Mm. Okay, left hand goes up, little adjustment, and back down. We're approaching the wake of the ship as I adjust the brightness on the HUD. Okay, keeping it coming, left hand up and back down. Our right aisle or radar altimeter should go off. There it is. As we cross the wake of the ship, keeping that turn in and get ready to switch our scan from more of an instrument scan in the approach turn to a visual scan behind the boat. In a moment, we'll roll wings level and target 15 to 18 seconds in the groove. Post the wings level transition, which starts right about now. Okay. This is just so crazy because this ship looks so small and the vastness of the ocean and you have this jet that is going so fast, clearly because it's catching up to it, no problem. But it's got to like hit the mark on this small little carrier. <laughs> it's just crazy to think about this thing's going so fast and it's got to slow down perfectly. And so it lands on this tiny little carrier. Obviously, it's not tiny, but, you know, when talking about the speed of things, it does seem well, really also small when you for think about like like for me my only experience well, having any landing in any sort of plane is like a commercial aircraft right. where you're landing on a giant runway right and, so this is so different and then when you land on those runways or even when you're taking off you're like feel like you're going for a long time i know mm -hmm. like when i'm on a commercial plane like you said i'm thinking when are we gonna stop or when are we gonna <laughs> get up in the air like, i feel like we've been picking up speed for a while yeah now, right? yeah and that's what i'm saying about this here it's just like you've got this small window where you've got to be so perfect with everything that he's doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I would assume other than simulators, like you can't practice this, right? Yeah. You know, I guess yeah. you could theoretically, you know, do it on strip. That's, you know, you've got the distance measured out and stuff, mm -hmm. but um, there's something to be said about doing this for the first time when you're landing on a carrier in the middle of the ocean. I mean, oh, kudos yeah. to, to these guys doing this stuff. Yeah. I'm sure it can be uh, your first time very nerve wracking which starts right about now. now okay meatball the lens it tells us whether we're high or low it's tough to see now but you'll see it in a sec line up center line the la continues to drift right because it's an angled deck angle of attack fly the amber donut meatball line up 
angle of attack, meatball, line up, angle of attack, meatball, a little high, working it down, and ball, 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 crap, all right, that happened super fast, let's back it up and watch it in slow-mo, and I'll break down the scan in even more detail. Play tape. The first thing we're looking at is the meatball, the lens, what we call the eye flaws, the improved Fresnel lens, or Fresnel lens, if you're a French sympathizer. The yellow ball above the green datums is a good place to be. Just above is perfect. The ball is tough to see now, but you'll see it better in close. Line up. The LA or landing area is angled about nine degrees left of center line, which means the pilots have to make continuous right-hand turns in order to stay on center line. Angle of attack, or the optimum hook angle. In a PLM approach, the flight control system automatically manages this angle for the pilot. Meatball, line up, angle of attack. And now as you cross the ramp, the scan changes to ball, 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 little high, working it down, and uh, trap. Nice. All right. Let's play tape at one time speed. Good trap, throttles come back. As you see, I'm looking way to my right because my director's behind me, I snagged the four wire. Brakes are released, the hook's up. Signature move, feeling better now. And now our throttles come up as we turn out of the LA, trying to hurry because there's another aircraft about 40 seconds behind us. Director's saying, keep that turn in, keep that turn in. There he is. And now he's passed me off to another director down by elevator one. He's moving his hands real quickly saying, get out of the LA. And now you see me reach up and reset the master caution that illuminated once I folded and unlocked my wings. All right. Now we're moving. He's moving his hands quickly saying, go, 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 go. Okay, now we slow down. A little left turn, no big deal. So much trust that has to go into these pilots. I mean, these things are so expensive. And like they were just saying, you know, you got another one coming in 40 seconds. You got to get on the move. It's going to come crashing to you from behind if you don't get your butt out of there. And if you're not like high level elite status as a pilot, you know, think how easy it would be to forget something like he just set the switch, right, for his wings. Yeah. You know? Well, I would yeah. imagine the people that are in this position and are actually like flying and landing on these things have like eons of experience at this point. I don't know. I don't think this is like newbie pilots. <laughs> well, I think that, like I said, you know, how do you train for it? And of course, I'm sure they get a decent amount of training. But I got to imagine some of these guys are pretty young that are doing this. Yeah. You know, fair. Um because I imagine as you get more experienced, you get into different roles and you become an advisor and, you know, you're not maybe not in the jet anymore because also it's physically taxing, mm -hmm. right, to fly one of these things. I'm not an expert. I'm just speculating here. Yeah. Clearly because my mind is like, what did this guy just say? I know. I feel like he's speaking another language. I'm like, huh? Yeah. I was like, well, what are you talking about? So you guys are going to have to give more details on on this one here. We're probably going to have to watch this like All three, I keep hearing is times. meatball. <laughs> I'm like, meatball, what? Yeah, I'm pretty hungry right now, I've got to be honest. So it was a little distracting. But um, I was thinking about meatball subs. No. <laughs> Makes me a flashbacks to Subway. <laughs> Ugh. Meatballs, yes. Subs, no thank. Not, not from Subway. <laughs> Anyways. You guys got to give us more details of what he was saying there because that was a lot to take in yep. um, in our first time watching this and I'm going to have to watch it again. Go, go, go. Okay, now we slow down. A little left turn, no big deal. You see the new director at her 10 o'clock right behind that hornet as he says, come forward, okay? Don't now fall off. Now I'm just watching my director as this gets a little bit uncomfortable. And now we slowly approach the edge of the ship and start that left-hand turn. No. Keeping that turn in. Close Come to the forward. edge. Now a little left turn, a little left. Keeping it coming. A little more, a little more left. Left, left. It's crazy. Coming forward. Now he's passed us off to a new director who you'll see in a sec as we keep that left turn in. But first we go forward and now left. Left, there he is. Coming forward, a little more left turn. Forward. Now you see that growler that just landed just behind me at my 11 o'clock? Wow. And stop. Okay. And now you see me set my parking brake as I wait for the ground crew to hook up a tractor to my That's nose crazy. gear. And push me backwards. Mm -hmm. All the way to the edge of the ship. Well, guys, if you enjoyed the jam today and you want more, be sure to check out the link on the right side of the screen for a really good look at what it's like launching off the bow of an aircraft carrier. And if you ever wonder how jets get gas airborne and how we measure that gas, I'll give you a hint. In hot tubs, be sure to check out the link on the left. Hope you like it. In hot stuff, hot, hot tubs eating meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> so that really also puts into perspective for me. Again, we, I mentioned the size of the carrier, right? And you have you saw the jets that he you know parked beside. There were other ones there. Another one just came in. 
you got so many of these jets on an aircraft carrier, right? And <clears throat> it's insane, really, when you think about it, that they've got to be utilizing the space so well to ensure they can get enough aircraft on the carrier, you know, have them placed in a, in a position where they can probably move fairly quickly, you know, get off the carrier and land and get them positioned really quickly. You know, a lot of um, orchestrating the, you know, little details, I feel like, go into this. Well, what I was just about to say, which goes alongside that, is that everybody has to be on, right? Because they're being passed from person to person to person. So, like, if one person isn't paying attention or just distracted, it messes up the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. And, Teamwork. like, you can see how close they are to each other, right? So everybody kind of has to be on the ball, making sure that they're paying attention to what they're doing and in a timely manner. Because if you're delayed, the person behind you is going to get messed up and everybody's going to get messed up. Yeah, it reminds me of a saying that I say quite frequently is just do your job. You know, if everybody does their job, then mission accomplished, essentially. Yeah. Right. You can apply that to anything, whether it's sports, business. Here we talk about the military. I don't obviously. think I'd last in the military with my squirrel brain. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I think this is what's kind of lacking in society to a degree, right, is that people just don't hold up their end of the bargain. And you see that it's so critical in the military, if you're going to have a high level performing military, everybody's got to be performing operationally Focused. on point. And that's probably why, you know, the American military has been known as elite for a very long time. It's because it was a well-oiled machine. Yep. And it's crazy, like, cause seeing that firsthand, because I don't have any experience with the military, right? So the more we watch these videos, the more we get to see that in real time. It was a cool experience. Yeah, it was. Let us know what you guys think down below. Give us insights, as I said. We appreciate them. Thank you so much for stopping by today. We'll see you on our next video. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.